Hello YouTube. Um, in this uh, video, I'm going to continue on the transformer three-phase transformer simulation um, from the last video. And in this case, we are going to have our uh, setup ready for the simulations. The very first thing that we need to do is the excitations, and we have to create our excita excitations. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to click on the terminals A. Uh, underline 1, underline 2, and underline 3 of the first uh, three coils. And um, you can either go to the excitation on the uh, Maxwell 3D, or you can just go ahead here and uh, or right here and right click on them and uh, select assign excitation. Uh, you want to have a current excitation uh, which will give you the option to give assign uh, a defined amount of current into these terminals. So let's go with this one. Uh, let's call the very first uh, current excitation the phase A and for the magnitude or the value of the current you can say minus po uh, 0.5 times uh, the magnitude. So whatever the magnitude is going to be. okay. And uh, because it's going to be an estrated meaning that it's going to be some coils that is uh, having a number of turns here uh, so it's not a solid uh, co uh, copper here it's just like it's like a stratted copper so uh, we select the stratted and then we say okay since there is a new magnitude value here it will understand that is a current and is a unit of ampere so we just put the value of 30 amp uh, note that here when we have the 30 amps uh, we are going to push our uh, core into the saturation or, or basically non-linear region which is one of the, the strong point of the magnetostatic uh, simulations uh, basically can calculate the non-linear uh, BH material. So let's do that and let's see what will happen. So I'm pressing OK on that. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the, for the terminal B. And uh, the only difference here is um, I'm going to have um, exactly the magnitude of the current here. It's not half of it because it's a, a three phase. So uh, because the magnitude is already uh, defined, you don't need to redefine it again. So that's good. And I'm going to do the same thing, double click on the three right click on them and then go and make my current excitation minus 0.5 times the magnitude and it is a stratton and that's okay so I did say a stratton so it is a stratton and the A is a stratton but minus and uh, C I forgot to actually call it phase C so that would be phase C um, Sorry for the mistake here. Okay. There we go. So now we have our uh, current, and look at that. Uh, it also evaluate the value uh, because the magnitude is thirty. Okay. Um, now that we've done this part, uh, we want to do the very last part of um, boundary, uh, basically, uh, setup. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to have a region, and you want to put the following uh, individual uh, path directions. For the plus x, we want to have 400. Uh, for minus x we want to have again 400 and the reason that I'm giving you these numbers is because the structure that we have is not exactly symmetric so we want to have 
because uh, it's like a rectangular looking so we actually giving different paddings to each side of that so I'm pressing OK and um, to fit the view I will press Ctrl plus D so I have this view so that's what we actually was looking for at the very beginning of the course now there are very small explanations that I'm going to give you before I um, <clears throat> uh, do the setup um, preparation and that is um, how this uh, simulator is going to calculate the inductance uh, so there are two ways to calculate the inductance one is to calculate the induct the the flux leakage from each um, coil and this flux leakage is basically the L11 I1 of the same coil plus L12 I21 of the second coil L1 like 5 whatever it is with all these uh, mutual coils the coil that uh, the flux that comes to this coil so uh, and then from that you just need to say okay the L is uh, the, uh, the basically uh, you divide that by I and I is square of the, the current that goes inside the cell and you get your value uh, for the for the inductance so uh, this is basically the the energy storage as uh, if you look at the energy how much energy is stored in the, in the inductance and then you divide the current a uh, square of the current uh, and then you will get the, the inductance the other way you can do that is to calculate the energy based on the B and H and um, you do an integral of B and H of I and J meaning that any kind of combination of coils and then divide the result by I square at the same time um, uh, so one of these results will give you a, a basically an incre incremental inductance while the other one give you the apparent inductance in the apparent inductance we calculate the total energy and divide that by the current or and in the flux uh, but in the incremental inductance we actually find the operating points and then we have the basically d flux by d current uh, which gives us the inductance at that point um, you can change that if you go to the design setting um, and then you can go ahead and uh, uh, check uh, what kind of a uh, sorry design setting and over here in the matrix uh, computation you can say okay do I want to have an apparent or in incremental here I'm gonna uh, show you this figure that actually will help you to see the difference between the apparent and the incremental um, calculation of the inductance uh, let's uh, leave that in the apparent mode and uh, uh, see how we can uh, basically change the inductance by the post uh, processing so uh, so as I said in order to be able to ca calculate the inductance you need to have H and you need to have the B uh, so you have to calculate the B um, uh, knowing the nonlinearity in the in the core material and when you calculate these two you do an integral and then over each surface around this uh, this areas and then you divide that by the current uh, square root of the current uh, but when you do that uh, by by default the ANSOFT will also uh, always uh, basically find the result per, um, uh, per per square number of turns so it doesn't care how many turns you have uh, the result of the inductance result that it will give you is basically as if uh, it's basically the density uh, per turn density uh, the inductance so if you have five turns you basically for the self inductance you times the nominal inductance to 25 and then you will get the actual inductance of that coil uh, if you have four term, turns you times the nominal inductance to to 16 and then you will get the actual inductance of that four turns coil <laughs> so um, so for that being said so we do have a post-processing 
uh, which will tell us how many turns we have, how much current we are putting putting into each turn. As you can see here, we have different coils, coil A, coil B, coil C, and we have these coils all uh, basically grouped together. These are sharing the same current, these are in the series, and these guys are in series as well, and the blue ones are in series as well. So uh, to do that, to, un to basically uh, give this post-processing um, um, uh, options to the uh, Maxwell, uh, one, uh, one thing you can do is you can go and uh, first of all you have to assign an analysis. You right click on the analysis and uh, assign a setup here. Uh, all these values here are fine. Uh, just one last point is if you decrease this value you are increasing the accuracy of uh, uh, finding the non-linearity point of the BH curve and that will take you more um, simulation time but it will give you better and more accurate results. And one last thing that I always always say is when you have a non-linear BH curve material like a steel that we are using for the core when you change the input current the B or the answer would not just like change linearly so you cannot solve this for one um, input current and then you say okay it's scalable I can scale the current therefore the result will scale as well that's not true because it's a non-linear BH curve each time for each current you have to calculate the B and H and from that you can calculate the inductance okay uh, let me go and um, uh, accept this uh, simulation results here and now what we want to do is we want to add some post uh, parameters for this uh, simulation that we have. So the result that we want is more than what the max will give us by default which is in this case is only H and B. So what we need is inductance. To do that we right click on the parameters and go and select the matrix here. And in the matrix we want to have make sure that all of the coils that we have are going to be excited. So we are exciting all the coils here in this tab. In the post processing we can also say what how many number of turns we have for each for each coil? So let's say we have 30 turns for each of these fellows, and uh, that will basically divide the 30 amp uh, into 30 uh, turns, which means that in each turn we have only one amp. Okay. So uh, the other thing that you want to do is we want to tell the Maxwell that these uh, phase A are all uh, winding and they are all together. So uh, we call them, we group them together and we say these are one unit. These are all in series. And so it would not calculate a crazy number of uh, mutual inductance between all these different possibles of, uh, of coils. So, so I'm changing names as well. Uh, instead of group, I'm making it five, phase one, phase two, phase three, and I'm pressing OK. One thing that in the of tutorials I found is uh, they are also trying to show you that you can have more than one ma matrix assignment. Uh, that doesn't mean that you necessarily want to have to do that, but you can do that uh, if you want to, for example, see what will happen if the number of turns change. Uh, you can do that. So let's say that the second matrix that we are assigning, we are going to change some of the post parameters uh, to see how this post parameter is actually working. So to do that, we can actually make this number of turns and uh, less. So that, which means that for the same amount of current that we have, uh, we will have uh, twice the current on each turn uh, in compared to the 30. So in the 50, we have um, half of the turns and therefore we will have uh, twice the current uh, because the the current that we are assigning is the same 30 amp. So basically for each turn we have 2 amp while in the other ma matrix that we generated uh, for each turn we had 1 amp. So we group these guys here and uh, we are putting more current here so basically we have more um, so depending on the non-linearity we have uh, we shouldn't see exactly twice the leakage or basically uh, same amount of inductance. Maybe we should have less inductance. You can see that. 
and let me just uh, select these fellows here as well so I'm gonna group these guys two to tell you that these are the same Okay, so now one, one other thing that we can do is we can also say that the number of branches here is not exactly the same, and we can say that the number of branches is three. Okay, so now instead of one, we can say there are three number of branches. So basically, we are uh, having a half number of turns and uh, three times less, three times more, which makes us three times more current, a number of branches. Therefore, we are expecting to have um, 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 3. Um, uh, sorry, 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2, which is 36 times less inductance in the new uh, matrix. So let's see. Um, so we have this values here. Press OK. And now we generate two set of mat matrices. And also we set up uh, uh, basically one one calculation, and because we have two set of matrices, it will run the post uh, simulation twice to give us the answer. Okay. Now uh, before I do uh, the the setup, I want to show you that everything is fine. When you do the validation, you will get all the check marks, uh, which is a good news. And uh, from this point, the the purpose of this second video is. Uh, finished. We accomplished uh, having the excitations, uh, defining the mat matrices, and also the analysis. Uh, the last video is going to show you how to see the results, compare them, and interpret them. Um, also, in the next video, I'm going to have the uh, half symmetrical uh, simulations by making this um, model into half, and then start the simulations. Because it's a symmetric model, it should work even if you are modeling even if you're simulating half of that. That will save you a lot of uh, computational time and uh, you can increase the accuracy instead of wasting your uh, time for the symmetrical results. Uh, okay, so leave me comments if you have any other questions underneath this video and uh, you can also um, uh, let me know on the channel.